everybody welcome back to Taji's world of books and welcome to my vacation reading wrap-up hey you guys so I just thought that I would jump on really quickly and share with you the things that I read over vacation while we were away so I read a total of five books while we were away so um, and I'm gonna go ahead and talk about those. So I already talked about the Indebted series, which I finished while I was on vacation, so you already got that in a separate video. So I'm gonna talk about those standalone and those other series that I read. Okay, so the first one that I wanna talk about is The Dare by Harley LaRue. You guys, this little novella is like 140 pages, something like that. It took me like four days to read this because I took this with me to the beach and like I would read like, I don't know, two pages and then somebody would talk to me or like I would go in the water or we would go in a, like I did, it just took me forever to get through this little book. And so let me say a couple things about this. This is on the banned book list. You can't get it anymore on Amazon. So, and I don't really understand why it's banned. Okay. Like it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because there's not a lot of things that I consider to be really crazy taboo. Everybody's consent consenting adults. Everybody is over 18. It takes place over the course of one night at a Halloween party that everybody meets at. And so it contains some really significant or distinct fetishes that exist in here like degradation, knife play, consensual, non-consensual, orgasm denial, those kinds of things. So I like again, of all the things that I've read with Captor Captive and Trafficking, this to me was like tame. Like I just didn't see why this is considered a banned reading list. It didn't, I didn't get it. But it is about Jessica and Jessica goes to a party and Jessica basically is, she's like, the, in high school she was like the cheerleader type. She was very popular, part of the popular crew. And she taunted and teased these other boys that were part of, like that she considered freaks and that she considered to be like not part of the cool crowd. The guy's name that is in here, I think his name is Lucas, if I, can, if I remember correctly. So, it's a, no, I'm sorry, the guy's name is Mason. So it's about Jessica and Mason. And so they, it starts off that they meet up at this party. They have a history because they, she taunted and teased them in high school as being part of like the degenerate crew. But they had like some kind of connection between Jessica and Mason. And so now that they're at this party, they're gonna start off with a game of truth or dare. And as a result of this game of truth or dare, Jessica doesn't wanna lose, and so she's gonna take on pretty much any dare that he puts in front of her. And one of the dares that he puts in front of her is that basically she's like gonna be his slave and she has to do anything he says. And he's gonna take out his revenge. But it very it becomes very clear that he gets off on degradating her, and she also gets off on being degraded and being made to do things that she normally wouldn't do but because he's forcing her to do those things it's a turn on for her and so everything sort of really takes on from there I think the part in the book where things get a little bit dicey and a little bit mixed is when his friends are involved in the situation and so you start to feel a little bit uncomfortable but again like I just didn't feel like it was it was all that taboo now was it great I gave this like a 3.75 like it was okay like I didn't think like I wasn't like over the moon about it It wasn't crazy but I wasn't like you know I wasn't bored with it either so it was like if you want to read it like go for it under normal circumstances I probably would read it in a couple hours but so if you want to check it out check it out like are you missing anything if you don't read it I don't think so but that's just my opinion Okay, so then the next series that I want to talk about is Jennifer L. Armentrout's, and this is from Blood and Ash novels, and I went ahead and read these while I was on vacation, and this was the perfect read for me on vacation, because normally, like, I like heavy, intense, captor captive dark romance type situations and anything else bores me because I was in such a slow easygoing mo mode this fantasy romance series hit the spot and was really really good for me so let me say this this book I didn't I wasn't into it as much as the subsequent novels where I was much more invested in the characters. And so this is about Cass and Poppy, but in the first book 
it really is that Poppy is considered the maiden and she is being held to a certain standard in this world, this mythical world that they live in because she is been she has been chosen to be the sacrificed one to be the maiden to ascend and we don't really know what it means to ascend but we do know that the entire kingdom's future really weighs on poppy's shoulders we know that that there is a history with poppy's family with her her parents dying to save her we know that she's been entrusted to the queen and the kingdom and poppy really is not supposed to interact she doesn't have any friends she only has one other maiden who has been not a maiden one other handmaiden if you will that's been assigned to her that she interacts with so she's very sheltered and it starts off with her wanting to just experience life and so she in the beginning of this book sets out to go to this pub and at this pub she meets a seer and the seer says what you're seeking is basically upstairs and she goes upstairs and she interacts with this masked guy or she interacts she's masked and she interacts with this dude and the dude turns out to be Cass and you really start to see that there is something between Castile and Poppy that needs to be further explored and that will develop into something if it's allowed to grow into that. And is he who he says he is? Is he really on her side? You know, who, who, it's like the typical fantasy novel, right? Where you don't know who is for the crown and who is for Poppy and who is trying to kill her, who's trying to take her out, what deceits and lies that are going on. There's some really nefarious characters in here. So it was really, everybody loved this book as a first book. And they really said that this is a five out of five star for me. It was not for me. It was a five out of five star for them. For me, it was a three out of five star. Like it took me a while to really understand this world, to get into this world. You know, Castile we know is in this in this book, his name is Hawk. And so she's trying to discover who Hawk is and if Hawk has her best interests and who Poppy really is. And I don't, I think in this book, they don't really even call her Poppy. I think only the people that are close to her call her Poppy. But whatever the case may be, I just couldn't get into it in this book. Now, let me say this. In The Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, however, I was really all in. I love the dynamic between Kieran and Castile and Poppy. I really, when they started talking about the joining, I was like, what's happening here? But there was a lot of talk about the joining, but the joining never happened. And so I was like, after all this conversation, like you have to let us in. I loved how they brought in the Atlantean, you know, um, Atlantis. I liked how once they, you know, Castile and Poppy got on the same page, I really liked their dynamic. The one thing I have to say about this book is that Poppy has the same conversations with herself and with others over and over and over again. And I'm, I just, she got annoying after a while. Like I was just like, really, do we have to say the same thing again? But like one moment you're like strength personified and the next moment you're weak. And then when I think that you're going to be weak, you're strong. And when you're strong, I think you should be weak. Like I just didn't understand her overall dynamic and I didn't understand her insecurity. I get it, but at the same time, it was like, it got to be a little bit annoying after a while, right? But at the same time, and then like Castile is so dedicated and so committed that I was just like, that's a little far-fetched for me. Like, I don't know that he would really be at that in real life or he wouldn't get annoyed with her, but he just never does. And so he's just, so I don't know. I like their dynamic, but I didn't like their dynamic. But this book was a four out of five star for me. And then The Crown of Gilded Bone, I really liked this story because once, but then it was like, you know, when you talk about like a twist, right? Like this had a twist in it, which you think like here, we're going in a certain direction, we're going in a certain direction, and then all of a sudden it's like, bam, and you're like, what? Like, wait a minute, I didn't see that coming. So the twist is kind of interesting, the direction that they're going with this book. But once they got on the same page, Castile and Poppy, they're like, they're on the same page and they're headed towards the same thing. This ends in a cliffhanger. Um, the next book is A Shadow of Ember and that's gonna be Nikos' story. And so it's a little bit of a takeoff from here. Jennifer has said that there is, I think she just put out that there are gonna be like six books in this series. So I'm just like, I, I don't know if I'm gonna hang in there for six books. I I just don't know. I don't know if I will. We'll see. 
we'll see how the story develops and goes. You can see that there is definitely like a thruple situation coming. You can see that there is, you know, this is not her traditional like, and you know, new adult novels. This is definitely an adult novel, but I think it's an adult novel because there's much more sex involved in these books. So this is definitely the best of all the books. I really loved it. It ends on a cliffhanger. We want to see what happens and where things go. We want to see what, I think the next book is The War of Two Queens. So we're going to see what happens with Poppy and with her ally or, you know, her allies as well as her nemesis and see how everything develops from there. So I'm going to say overall so far for me, and I'm assuming that most of you guys that are here like dark, dark romances like I do, this is like a solid four out of five star. If you want something different, if you want something outside the dark circles and you want to like give yourself a little bit of a palate cleanser, then you definitely try it. A friend of mine read it as well and she kind of likes what I read and she was a little bit annoyed and, and she felt po found Poppy to be like a little bit like, oh, here we go, Poppy. Same thing, say the same thing, different day, same conversation over and over again. So I'll have said that and that's all I really have to say about that. So you guys, that's really all that I read while we were on vacation. So um, I'm getting caught up and that's all I have. So the next videos that we're going to finish with are Pepper Winters Deep Dive. We're going to talk more about those books that we're getting into and get a reading order going for that. But yes, that's all I really have. So you know, I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So if you like what you are seeing, please like and subscribe. Come hang out with me more and I will catch you on Friday.